Thanks for listening to Leadership Level Up. I'm Brian Prairie. And I'm Dr. Jeff Williamson. I am just starting my leadership journey. And I've been guiding leaders for 30 years. Our podcast aims to shine a spotlight on outstanding leaders and provide a platform for them to describe their leadership journey and share the guiding principles that have helped them become great leaders. On today's episode of Leadership Level Up, Kent Wade discusses the events of his life that have led him to become the leader he is today, the importance of an adaptable mindset, and explains how to implement these concepts in daily life. Welcome to Leadership Level Up Podcast. I'm Jeff Williamson, your host, and I'm really excited today to introduce you to a friend of mine who I met just a few months ago, actually. Uh, Kent Wade, also known as a library guy. I'll let him tell you how he earned that uh, <laughs> that name uh, in his work as well. Um, but Kent, good to have you here, man. I mean, we we were fast friends. We met, I don't know, oh, yeah. September maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just yeah, a few right months. Conference. So as we know, none of us got here on our own. So when you think about people who've invested in you, impacted you, who, who are some people or some some types of leaders that come to mind well thank you for the opportunity to be here uh like you said we met just only a couple months ago but it's it's feel like it's been forever uh and there's been hundreds of people that have came into my life that has inspired me to take a little nugget um in person virtually social media via music movie whatever Uh, but i have to say growing up here in kankakee having that library guy name um i'll give you five important people real quick uh marcus struther um, he's no longer here in Kankakee, but he used to be an educator at mm-hmm. the Kankakee High School. Um, he was a mentor and an advisor leader for Brother to Brother. And um, he really showed me how to walk authentically in Kent Wade, mm-hmm. how not to be, be afraid of, yeah, be me, yeah. you know, be unapologetically me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a strong, proud black man that loves my community and there's nothing wrong with that. And so he really, sh- man, he showed me that yeah. and because I thought I had to pick a side. It was either be black or be for the community. Mm. And it wasn't that. Yeah. And he showed that by the love that he gave every one of his students, regardless mm. of what they look like, where they've been. But he made sure to be intentional to focus on those students in those particular marginalized areas. And he, he, brought, he brought them up. And he put them together and he challenged them to build a new community. And so what a legacy. I, I wouldn't be here with it if it wasn't for him. He challenged me. Um, I have to give Steve Bertrand uh, some some love, former library director from the Kankakee, Kankakee Public Library. Uh, very hard to replace him as a board member uh, for a director. Uh, but he showed me early on when we used to go to the old library that I was welcomed. And so at the time, it was early 2000s. I had just moved to Kankakee. And again, I'm a teenager, not sure where I can go, where I can be. And I walked in with my hoodies, my 3X T-shirts and my 48 waist pants. Don't ask Jeff, long story. Uh, but he embraced- I can picture it, it's okay. You, you can picture it? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I can picture uh, it. My son laughs at me. He's 16, so he uh, laughs at okay. me about it. But yeah. he welcomed me and my friends into the library and he made it a safe place for us to mm-hmm. be. He didn't judge us by how we looked how we, we we talked. He let us be the people that we wanted to be inside the library. Um, Camille Rose, who still works at the public library, she's the youth services coordinator, and she was uh, pivotal being a mother figure. And so with me being adopted, my adopted mother was older at the time. She was in assistant living. And Camille Rose was a mother figure. She made sure that I got that energy to be the best that I can be. She even challenged me to go get my GED when I dropped out of, the high, out of high school, I hung out at the library and she was like, you're not doing that. Mm-hmm. You're not doing that. And she so she saw more for you. She saw more. She saw yeah. more for me. And so yeah. she said, look, this is what I this is what we're going to do. And so I have to give Camille uh, Rose that love. And she introduced me to a woman named Lisa Weaver, who will be my fourth person who bust my butt to get my GED mm-hmm. and to become a professional with mm-hmm. my story. Yeah. And so, and really she broke the color barrier that I had in my life, you know? And so she challenged me because she was a four foot 11, blonde haired, blue eyed, Caucasian woman who would come to the neighborhood where they were selling drugs, where there was gang activity. And she would leave her car running to come and make sure that I was at class. And if mm-hmm. I wasn't, She'll knock on the door, have me come to the door and have me give her all these reasons. And so Lisa has been uh, just 
another huge impact. She would not give up on me. She sought you she, out. That's she, the phrase that came out. She sought you she out. She sought me out because yeah. of that greatness. Yeah. And then she helped me be able to talk to millionaires and mm -hmm. influencers and people to not only gain scholarships, but to tell my story. And so, uh, man, the, the fifth person, man, I have to say my wife. Um, like I said, there's been a new, there's been numbers and numbers of people that have sure. been instrumental. So it's really hard to go right, through the whole right. entire list. It is. But my wife has been a backbone of mine for the last 12, 13 years. Wonderful. Um, she's pushed pushed me to ch step out of my comfort zone. Um, even when it became time to leave the library, which was very hard for me. Yeah, that's been. I was there for, for fifteen ye fifteen years. Yeah. I was there working. Yeah, three years as a teenager. Yeah, and now I'm on the board of directors, so yeah. I can't really leave. Yeah, but she said she wanted me to step out of my comfort zone. So, when we talk about your leaders or influencers that you mentioned, the, f the five people that have really impacted you a lot, I think also there are opportunities or struggles even that that help us yeah. to become overcomers yeah. and you and i've talked enough to know you that that's part of your story like you mentioned high school those were some rough times and those kind of things um if you kind of pull that forward to the lessons you've learned and the and who you are today what what are some of the ways as, as a leader that you are able to overcome those times when there's frustration or there's a reroute <laughs> yeah, or there's yeah. a delay or whatever. The, what, what are some of the characteristics that have yeah. really helped you to, to adjust to those? Well, one of my favorite words is the word ambition mm -hmm. and it's defined as a desire that requires determination and hard work. And so three pieces or three ingredients that I take out of that is that, that desire, that hunger, um, growing up, younger, not a lot of opportunities, not a lot of exposure. Um, my, my adopted mother did everything she could to make sure she took care of our, us as children. Um, however, having that desire to do something, to be something wasn't there. There wasn't a certain guidance to say, well, you know, one day you guys are going to do this. Have you thought about Have this? Have you thought about this? Yeah. You know, um, it was the role of get good grades, mm -hmm. graduate, get a good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, go to college, get a good job. And so that doesn't really give you a purpose. You know, um, it's sort of, well, I'm doing this because this is what you told me to do. And so, you know, as I got older, having that experience, one of being kicked out of high school and put alternative school was really the first time that I had to engage a desire, which was I had to get the GED. I did not want to be a high school dropout. And so with that being said, um, I had, to, I had to get it. And so I made that push because, you know, my sons, you know, one of them is here today, my four year old. Yeah. yeah he's so, hanging with us. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. He's hanging with us. And, but I want them to know high school graduation mm -hmm. is a must. Yeah. That's a benchmark. That's yeah. a, um, what is it? A, 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 a pathway to manhood or yeah. womanhood because I have a daughter, my beautiful yeah. daughter. Yeah. Um, and so that desire. So you have to have that Establish desire. Establish a pathway for him to mm -hmm. have some guidance. You have to. And it's like yeah. carried at the, end of the, at the end of the road. If you yeah. don't see it, yeah. how can you really know where you want to go? And so the second part, again, once you have that desire, it comes with determination and hard work. That determination is that resilience. You know, getting that GED was not easy. Going yeah. back to college with a 0 0.64 GPA, homeless, co-parenting, with the two-year-old mm -hmm. was not easy. Having agencies tell me if, literally tell me, if you were a mother, I can give you, I have tons of resources, but because you're a father, there there are certain things that we just don't have in our, in, in their grants or in what they have in their funding. Wow. And so those things were were moments and those, those hurdles that would have normally knocked old Kent back. Yeah. But because I had a desire, I had a hunger, mm -hmm. I'm like, this this is something that I have to keep doing. We can figure this out. We have to figure this out. Yeah. And so with the hard work part, it, it comes with doing things that may be uncomfortable. Like I mentioned earlier, leaving the library was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, becoming a waiter at Red Lobster was uncomfortable. Yeah. Stepping out and telling my story at United Way in front of work sites with different people of different backgrounds was right. were uncomfortable. Right. But when I did it, I saw some. I saw fruits that I've never seen right, before. Right. So and you're good at those things. And I'm. Good and you at didn't know things. it until you jumped in, right? Until I got put in the fire because yeah. vicariously, Kent means calmly and finally born a fire, in, in the Scandinavian language. Oh, I like that. And so, just the testament of my name yeah. goes into the testament of the work that I do. 
comes from going and being forged through that fire. So one of the things that, that I wanted to get some more thoughts from you or uh, your story, as we mentioned, um, y- you you found workarounds, you found a way to get things done um, rather than just saying, oh, OK, no was the answer. Right. But <laughs> yeah. but um, w- what are some of the things that it would be in the area, you know, be like resilience, some of those kinds of things that are outcomes or even fruit that you now uh, are bearing oh, because of yeah. some of the things you've had to work through, yeah, overcome, yeah. figure out? I would say one, patience. Um, patience, because uh, when you don't have, and then we live in a microwave society now. So, you know, I'm in that fine line of millennials where I remember where we didn't have, we nobody, like only a few people had computers to where now everybody has a, a phone or an iPad or a laptop. And so it really taught me patience. It taught me that you gotta gotta put in those those hours. The resilience factor. Um, I actually listen to a, a a motivational YouTube video every morning while I shower. Uh, one that I save water because it's two minutes and thirty seconds. So when it's over, that that's your I timer. Need, time to get out. Get in, get out. Um, but it talks about resilience. It talks yeah. about getting knocked down and getting back up. Um, it talks about just listening, being able to listen to people. Uh, because when you're fighting and you're scrapping and you're looking, for, you're in survival mode. You don't listen. You go off of that feeling. You go off of emotion versus actually listening. And so, uh, visionary, becoming a visionary. You're able to see a vision before it actually happens. Because when you when you're building with nothing, you gotta. If I'm pitching to somebody, I gotta give it. I gotta give you the vision. I gotta be right. able to show you what I'm able to do or talk about or present. Even a Red Lobster, I got to show you the experience. Right, right What are we right. here for? Are we celebrating or are we just not cooking tonight? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. We're not cooking tonight. Yeah. So, okay, okay. that's a celebration. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so um, those are just a, a couple of things and just really, I want to say I've always had it, mm-hmm. but in these trials and tribulations, I've learned also uh, how to empathize, how to understand other people and what yeah. they are going through yeah um, because every occupation is a service every occupation i have um, under my belt right now i would say I'm, I'm doing about maybe four or five i would say five five or six different occupations and each one of them is a service yes and so when you provide a service you're giving a customer quality of a product and so with that if you don't know what the person wants or needs, or maybe even the lens that they're looking through, you'll never get the fruit of what we all aspire to do in our occupations or our jobs or our careers or our, our passions, yeah. which is the fulfillment of what someone else needs. Mm-hmm. And so it really heightened that because I had to learn what I needed. And so, you know, a lot of those sacrifices mean, meant losing friends, mm. losing family members. Uh, my mother passed away. You know, and so, you know, those words, resilience, patience, um, I would add courage, confidence, you know, uh, affirmation, like in the morning, Kent, you got this. Yes. You let's go. It's going to be a good day. It's That's one of my favorites. Day. It's going to be it's, a good it's day. It's raining outside. Oh, it's going. I love the sunshine today. My wife would be like, what are you talking about? You know, she's a, she's a realist and she's going, she's straightforward. What are you talking about? I was like, no, it's, it's sunny outside and uh, Whatever you need to do to get going. Because there's sunshine in there's here. There's sunshine in here, you know? Uh, and so just yes. empathy yeah. um, uh, and, and listening. Those are just key words that I would say for leadership for yeah. me that has helped yeah. me be able to not only deal with the issues of then, but the issues of now. Because it's a whole new set of issues now than it was when I was 16, 18, 20, it's just 21. You. It, it was Pretty just Pretty much me. just you. Yeah. Now it's me, my wife, and... And your children. And children, with yeah. four of them. Right. So different age groups, different genders, different focuses, different pa- passions. I'm sure as they become young adults, it's going to be a conglomerate of different ideals. Yeah. That yeah. Even now, like I I've never was a Christmas person. Yeah. Never cared for it because we didn't grow up having Christmas. It wasn't necessarily a great time. It wasn't a great yeah. time. You know, it was, and then you get older, it's like, well, why is everybody so happy? Like, what's, what are you happy about? And then my kids come along and... They're There's so joy They're everywhere. Joy. They're yeah. joy. They see Christmas trees and they're yeah. excited. And yeah. I would challenge their happiness. Yeah. And they'll be like, damn. You saying you're a little Mr. Scrooge once yeah, in a they, while? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. I was. Especially you're my you're a former Scrooge. A former Scrooge, okay. former Grinch. Okay. Uh, my, my oldest son, who's very 
his birthday's today. So, you know, oh, shout out to Keyshawn. Uh, his name means gift from God. And he definitely was that. And I would tell him, like, you know, Santa Claus isn't real. Like, I would tell him this. I'm just raw. Just, just go ahead. Just go ahead just and do go it. Ahead, get it out the way. And he asked me, He, you know, he challenged me because, again, I grew up in the church. You know, I don't tell people what to believe or how to believe. I encourage but you have those to, core values that are part of who you are. And I, and I challenge people to find their core values. Whatever yeah. your foundation is, find that. And yeah. once you have that foundation, then you can grow. Yeah. And uh, he was like, well, Dad, don't you believe in God? And I was like, yeah, I believe in God. He was like, sure. well, have you ever seen God? And, I, and at that time, I was younger. So, you know, the ideal yeah. of seeing God in, yeah. in, my, in the life around me wasn't yeah. really there yet. And I was like, yeah. well, no, I haven't. And he was like, well, I haven't seen Santa Claus, but... There's evidence that he's around, and, I, and that he destroyed Touché. that. And that's so why I stopped saying that. I stopped. Like, okay, I, it's one of those. I, where are you gonna go? Okay, my my ten year twelve year old uh, just outsmarted me. So yeah. we're gonna move on to the next topic. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like eight or nine at the time. He oh was, man, yeah. I was giving you double digits on that. Nah, nah, Jeff. He was he was he was single digits. Just oh wow, I had it a curve. But it's just again, you know, when you when you create something. Again, those words that I told you, those are things that I, I look to pass down to my children. Yeah. I didn't there's no blueprint to being a parent. Right. There was no father figure blueprint to model. So the things that I've learned as a father has literally been from picking up pieces around me from older men, yeah. from my own yeah. lived experience. The four sure. year old that's here with us today, yeah. He gets a he's he's getting a different version of father than my sixteen year old got when he was. Oh, four. sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you're was, a different guy it's now. A different. Yeah. I was surviving then. Today, there's no. We, we don't. We don't. Su there. We don't survive. We, no. we We don't struggle. Should I say? Yeah. We're 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 working toward the dream. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just a different yeah. different growth process. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. Man. And I love that service component. That everything you've done, whether it's library yes, service, sir. whether it's food service, waiting, all those kinds of things, yes, is sir. that your spirit and your heart is serving people. Yes. And I think that's such a gift to anyone that crosses your path because then when a person has that kind of mindset, it doesn't matter what their work is so much as that they're going to, it's how we do things for others, yeah. whatever the responsibility, whatever the role is. And I love that, that you really highlight customer service and yes. how important that is to you, both from your learned experience and then how you make other people feel yeah. when you're around them. I love that. Yeah, that, that was modeled to me, even with the five individuals that I gave you. And I can keep going through the list of different individuals who have came in my life, left my life, and it, it derived, they, their energy derived from a place of servitude. My adopted mother was a servant. She gave and gave to people. Some, and, and she actually overgave, yeah. in, in my younger opinion. But when I saw the reward back that she had, even as she was getting older, mm. even with nurses, yeah, when she came into a nursing home or a treatment facility, there was just this light and energy that they just, she had the best care. And I believe that was her reward or her payment from the generosity and the servitude that she gave. Yeah. And I learned that, for me, those examples, especially as I began to grow in my profession, as become a jack of all trades, I was always taught you should have a mastery. Mm -hmm. And so since I didn't master basketball like I wanted to, I my mastery came in the form of customer service, yeah. giving people a great experience. Yeah. And that's how I got the library guy name. Yeah. Was because at the library, I was the person that people saw first. They're looking for you. They're after looking for they me. knew you. Suits yeah. and ties. Yeah. Or people from Salvation Army. Yeah. Students. It didn't matter. People from my old neighborhood, they knew when they came into the library, Kent was going to be at that He's front. He's gonna desk. do me right and help me. And yeah. so it was like, ding, servitude is that way of even when you're having those gloomy days, when you make someone else's day better, yeah. It's yeah, it's 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 it's, it's wonderful. And yeah. so, and that's the goal is really to give people something that I felt I didn't have early on in my life where I, mm -hmm. I felt that I had to search through other people and other things, not realizing it starts within, but there are a lot of us who do that. And so I want I want to give people that light, that energy that you can do it. You can, ha let's have a great day. Everybody has that option. Let's yeah. Everybody has that option. Mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. the option. And sometimes you, you bump into somebody that reminds you that it's an option because yeah. life will make you forget, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. And I, and I like the, the, the aspect of it too, is that you've chosen to 
have that spirit about you. You've chosen to elevate other people by how you interact with them. I mean, that was that struck me immediately. And you know, the yeah. first time we we were on a Zoom call and then we met up for coffee and yeah. immediately we had this connection and this yeah. kinship because we both could see the value in that other person and that they're trying to really be kind and take care of people. And I love that about you. So yeah. um, appreciate that. that's one of the reasons I was uh, looking forward to having you on, on the podcast. So oh, man, I appreciate it. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Man, uh, thanks it's for always me. a joy and we'll do this again. So let's do it. Thanks for let's being on it. leadership level up. Thanks for listening to this episode of leadership level up. Please subscribe so you don't miss future conversations with great leaders. Also, be sure to follow Converge on LinkedIn, Facebook, and at Converge Group LLC on Instagram.